someone sent me a comment, made a comment on my channel, and uh, uh, the avatar has a picture of what looks like a woman to me. So this is uh, this is a woman, and she says, "Dude, look into self growth." And your suffering, dot, dot, dot. Please. So I guess she just stumbled onto uh, uh, my channel and uh, I guess didn't know what to make of it. And uh, she included a link. So I clicked on the link. I was curious uh, as to how I can, uh, I can end my suffering, right? And look into my uh, self-growth. So I clicked on the link and this is what I found. I thought it was a good topic to uh, explore it in the video. I'm going to tell you how to be attractive. Hey, how you doing everybody? This should be very good. Uh, this uh, character here is going to teach us how to be attractive. That is to the opposite gender uh and we all want to know that don't we <laughs> we're all interested in that one and he's going to do it in a very easy way he's going to give us the tip of a lifetime and if we follow that we are going to get laid but i'm going to give you the key not some sort of little gimmick and i can go in and i can give you a list of a lot of little techniques and tips that you can use to increase your attractiveness to the opposite sex whether you're a guy or a girl. But I'm gonna actually give you something that's very deep. And this is gonna take some effort on your part to understand, because this is a profound idea that if you just take this principle and you apply it to your life, the amount of attraction that you will generate from the opposite sex is gonna be ridiculous. Ridiculous? That's what you wanna hear. This is such a powerful idea. So here it is, and you might not like it. But this is why it's powerful. Okay, here it comes. I want you to be completely detached from needing anyone to fulfill you in your life. You don't need anyone to fulfill you in your life? I mean, that's exactly why you want to get into a relationship in the first place. You want to be fulfilled. Now, this guy is a... Um, is a YouTube... Um, pop psych slash relationship slash meditation i don't know guru uh, of, of 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 yoga or whatever he is but he's got a lot of subscribers uh again another individual who appeals to uh single women uh who are uh approaching their uh their expiry dates so to speak and they have come to the realization that uh, they haven't gotten into a relationship. They don't have anything to show for it. They haven't reproduced. Uh, they never found a guy that uh, could or would give them what they want. So they want to make themselves feel better. And here's this guy who is going to make them feel better his whole career is based on making these individuals feel better about themselves when they know they ran out of time at the same time he is making himself feel better because he's in the same situation as his audience again uh, this is the kind of thing that uh, people used to read these trash magazines and and you know cosmopolitan or whatever it may be and 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 a lot of the uh tabloids and get this pop psych from them and we've heard this topic thousands of times i know i have over the years over the decades it's the same thing uh don't be needy in a relationship all right well that's exactly why you want to get into a relationship in the first place because you need the other person. You have voids. You need those voids filled. 
by another individual. And at the same time, you got to be careful with this. At the same time, you are going to have the ability to fill the voids of your partner. Okay, that's what is the glue, the adhesion in a relationship. If you don't have that, you don't have a relationship and you have no need for a relationship, okay? So it, this it's a complete a reality and pop psych don't go together. They don't coexist in the same world. Reality and pop psych. Okay, and this guy's giving you pop psych. And I want to give you reality. I want to give you reality so when you step out the door, you are going to actually enter the world of reality. You're not going to enter the world of pop psych. And a lot of pop psych has an agenda behind it. And ultimately, uh, what is the purpose of this agenda? What is the end result, the, the, the expected result of the propagandists? To stop you from having relationships. To hinder you in your ability to have relationships. It doesn't matter if you're a male or if you're a female. And if you are a male, they're going to give you one message. And if you're female, they're going to tailor their message to females. All right. To work on your fears, to work on your um, insecurities to work on your prejudices, to work on your guilt, and ultimately your hatred toward the other gender, the opposite gender. And what is the bottom line? What is the purpose, the objective? Well, if you don't get in a relationship, you're not going to reproduce. You have to have a... a uh, an association with someone of the opposite gender to reproduce. And if they put up every type of obstacle and every type of disinformation, if they give you all of this, you are simply not going to be able to get in a relationship in order to reproduce. You follow how this works? So, what they're going to do is fill you, fill your mind, and also fill you emotionally with disinformation. And heighten your prejudice towards the opposite gender. I want you to realize that you do not need anyone in your life to make you happy or fulfilled, despite what it might seem like right now. You see what he what he did? He actually just admitted it that you don't need anyone in your life, period. And then he goes on and says, to fulfill you or to make you happy. Well, then there's no need for a relationship. We can all be singles, right? We can all lock ourselves up in our little basement apartments and go to our job every day. Because we're already happy. We're already fulfilled, are we not? Now, what the fuck are we doing on this channel or on his channel? See? Absolute contradiction. Now, I can tell you that this guy is a single individual and he may not have ever been in a long-term relationship. Who knows? But this is not something that would be coming from someone who was in a long-term relationship, has experience with multiple relationships, multiple women, and has experience with possibly even marriage. There's no way that they would make these statements that this guy is making. Now, I don't think this guy is a subversive. I don't think that he uh, is a uh, Khazar operative. He's just a fucking dummy, that's all. And he wants to sound smart, and he got this out of pop psych. And we've 
all heard this. I mean, I, I know that this topic is familiar to everybody, almost everybody watching this. Because we've heard it over and over and over again. You got to make yourself happy first. Bull fucking shit. You yourself... have this proclivity to be stuck in a bubble. And if you're in a bubble, you're not getting true reality. You're not getting any perspective from anybody else's um, view of you. Anybody else's reaction to you. So, you are really actually not able to make yourself happy. And there's a whole bunch of other things that come into play. Uh, with males, you've got the instinct, uh, you know, the instincts that are crucial to fulfillment as a male, which are the instincts of uh, protect and provide. And uh, there is no way that you can make those happen and fulfill those instincts by yourself or through yourself. That's why you're getting into a relationship in the first place, right? So that you can actualize your masculinity. You can only do that through the perspective of someone of the opposite gender. Now, I know what you might be saying. You might be saying... Well, Leo, the whole point of getting into a relationship is because I want, I want to have love, I want to have compassion, I want to have excitement, I want to do all these fun things, I want to find my soulmate, maybe I want to get married, I want to have children, I want to raise a good family, all of these things. Yes, you have the instinctual need to do all of that. You know, nothing wrong with that, that's all well and good, but... I can guarantee you that the biggest problem that you're having, if you're not being attractive in a relationship, is not that you're not pretty enough, or that you're behaving in some weird ways, or you're doing something incorrectly. It's this general idea, this philosophy, this mindset, that you're going into the relationship with the need for somebody to be your second half, to fulfill you. Well, we certainly don't want to imply that we have a need for somebody to fulfill us, right? Uh, this is uh, directly speaking to those childless, single, middle-aged women who need to be reassured and they need to be made comfortable with their condition of being single. And really not having anything tangible in their life. Because having a career, having money, um, even having friends is not tangible. It's not something that should define you. It is not anything profound. It is not anything truly rewarding being in a relationship that works is what is rewarding and is what is going to be fulfilling now if you are already fulfilled and if you have no needs why the hell would you want to get into a relationship in the first place I mean we make the sacrifice we take the risks, we take the losses, <laughs> we take the possibility of being completely ruined because we have needs and we have desires that we want to actualize. We want to, as males, provide and protect. We want, as males, to have female validation. We want, as males, someone to take care of, somebody to care for, somebody to have offsprings with. We can't do any of that prior 
to getting into a relationship. He's implying that you got to get all that done prior to get into the relationship. So once you get into the relationship, what the hell do you do you got left to achieve? Have sex? I mean, what kind of sex will that be? It'll be like fucking robots, right? Robots fucking each other. Because you're already fulfilled on both sides. You've got no no needs in that department. You've got nothing to, to achieve or get done. All you're going to do is have mechanical sex. Physical mechanical sex. And as I pointed out previously, that does not work for either gender. I've talked about males. That does not work for males. Mechanical Emotionally devoid sexual, physical sexual activity does not fulfill the male. It leaves him even more empty. So I have no idea why what somebody would ever get into the relationship if you are already happy, fulfilled, you have no needs. Why would you want to get into a relationship? I would say, you know what, I, you know, don't risk the disadvantages of being in a relationship. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of effort. And if you want to call it a relationship, it must include emotional investment. Sometimes tremendous emotional investment. That's why most men are crushed are crushed through relationships or failed relationships or relationships which are not fulfilling them because they put so much emotion into it. Where this guy leaves emotion out or through his implications, emotions are really not even in the equation. They're not even necessary. To me, that seems like a horrible vision of a relationship if you could even call it that just horrible i don't know what kind of a world he's promoting here i really don't and it's very easy to get caught up in this because mainstream media puts out this notion of what love and romance and relationships are like if we watch movies and watch stories and listen to fairy tales, we get this picture that love is this finding somebody else to complete you. That is not what true love is. That is not what a healthy relationship is. Says who? A healthy relationship is one in which both parties, both the man and the woman, or whatever your relationship ends up being, girl, girl, guy, guy, girl, guy, doesn't matter. You need to be confident and independent and happy by yourself. And so does the other person. You, you need know? to be confident, independent, and happy by yourself before you get into a relationship. Well, there's no purpose of getting into a relationship if that's the way you are. And if that's the way uh, your partner your, or your, your prospective partner is. I mean, what's, what's the purpose, my friend? What's the purpose? I don't get it. <laughs> they might as well just pay a prostitute because you've already got everything. The only thing you're missing is the sexual part, right? The physical sexual part. Oh. And only then can you two come together and create something that is greater than the sum of its parts. And how exactly is that going to be greater when both of you have emotionally everything you need? What the hell can you build on that? So what's greater than its parts? If you guys are both happy, independent, confident, and, uh, uh, you know, self-fulfilled, then what, what is it that you actually need from the other individual? There's absolutely nothing. There's no need for the other individual. The other individual will not feel needed. And, you know, that's one of the characteristics of a, of a, of a relationship, uh, any relationship, is to be needed. 
uh, for it to even exist is a need for the other individual. What this guy is uh, fantasizing about and making up as he goes along and maybe consoling himself for not being in a, being, being in a relationship um, is that, and he's speaking to millions of single childless women who never did establish uh, their biological imperatives to fulfill that, uh, they need a lot of consoling. Uh, and that's uh, what they gravitate towards. That's why this guy's got so much subscribers, right? Because um, he's speaking their language. But I'm here to give you reality. And the definition of a relationship, any relationship, is a need. A need. Period. Just the word need. And specifically, a need for the other individual. And it has to go both ways. Uh, the other individual has to need you as much as you need him or her. Otherwise, you have no relationship. As simple as that. This is a hard idea to get, wrap your head around because especially if you're feeling lonely right now, and you're feeling like you're lacking something in your life and you feel like, well, if only I had that guy or that girl. If so if you're feeling lonely right now, don't ever even think of getting in a relationship. You got to take care of your loneliness first and then getting to get into a relationship. Then, then go and meet somebody. <laughs> but not when you're lonely. Not when you're not independent. Not when you're emotionally dependent on someone where you want to be. No, 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 never. When your confidence level is low and you feel empty inside and you've got all these needs and all these voids, don't ever think of getting in a relationship. Oh no. Because why would you need somebody? You don't need actually, you get in a relationship when you need nothing from the other individual. What? I don't get it. <laughs> Only I had that love that I had maybe in a previous relationship. If I could rekindle that kind of spark again, then I would be happy. I would be content. My life would be complete. Well, that's the problem. That's highly unattractive to the opposite sex. Why would uh, somebody who has needs and is genuinely interested in the other person because they need the other person to be in their lives. Why would that be unattractive to the opposite sex? Um, well, if you ever run into that situation, run away because that person is not gonna, you're, you're not gonna, you're not gonna take off on any relationship with that individual. Um, what is wrong with getting into a relationship because you do have needs in your life, uh, either through trauma from early childhood or, or a loss or neglect of parents or whatever it may be, uh, it shapes who you are and uh, you do need certain things, certain elements that we all need. Yeah. Things that we are missing, things that will complete us, things that will make us better. Yes, these are all things that will make us happier. Yes, and that's why being in a relationship will make us happier. What can you build if you've already got that? If you have already got everything going for you, what the hell are you going to build on top of it in a relationship? You're going to be two independent individuals who don't need each other. That's insane. You know what? And that is the recipe for divorce. That is the recipe to break up. When she doesn't need you. Or you don't need her. Ugh. Disaster, my friend. Disaster. Maybe things that 
we have never had. But this person can supply it, can offer it, and is willing to offer it. And that is where the attraction comes from, the attraction to the other individual who you know or he, who you can imagine will be able to fulfill these needs. That's what attraction is. That's what falling in love is, actually. Uh, we're going to lie if we're going to deny this. Anybody that's going to deny it, including this guy here. Um, what really attracts a person to another individual at the very uh, beginning, at the time of, of first interaction, is your perception that that individual can fulfill your needs. And don't forget that that is precisely how women select their partners. That is precisely what makes women attracted to any particular guy in any particular situation. It's her perception that this guy is going to give me what I'm looking for. <laughs> That's right. Be it either utility or be it emotional. Both go together. It's because she's going to look at you and in a matter of two sentences from you, three sentences, five minutes, she's going to know. And that's what she's looking for. How is this guy going to fulfill me? Going to fulfill my needs? Where is this guy going to take me? That's what she's asking immediately in her head. Not just unconsciously, but consciously. And you know what? Men do the same thing. And very importantly, the perception that what you are all about and what you're able to give and the satisfaction in, in, in feeling that is that what you're able to give is going to fulfill the other individual simultaneously the two work simultaneously right both have needs both fulfill each other and that's the definition of a relationship a long-term relationship and that is what will result in a long-term relationship this constant satisfaction from the other person fulfilling your needs and you fulfilling her his or her needs there are actually two points here first is the more shallow point the surface level point that it's simply actually repulsive to the other person and that when you're coming from that mind frame you're actually going to be repelling rather than attracting people well if you're going to repel somebody uh because you're being um completely open and completely giving and completely exposing your vulnerabilities to the individual and saying I need what I think you can offer I really admire the things that you have and you can offer me and at the same time it would give me great satisfaction and happiness to be able to offer you what you need. Now, if this repels the individual, then it's a wonderful filter because that individual is not for you. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Run. <laughs> if you're gonna, if you're gonna repel somebody by disclosing this, either openly or or uh, uh, by implication. Um, that's where the connection is. That's where the connection is made. It's a give and take situation from both sides. That's where the connection is. If you are, if she needs something from you and you as a guy knows what she can offer you, emotionally speaking, uh, I'm talking completely emotionally here. Um, 
on this topic. Then you have a relationship. That is the glue that will keep you together every single day. You wake up in the morning and you say, she needs me and I need her. Wow. <laughs> Neither of us is going anywhere. No. See? That's because, well, when you are desperate and when you're needy, other people do not want to be around you. At least not the kind of person that you want in your life. What you're going to attract when you're needy and desperate is you're going to attract somebody else who's on that same level. So you might attract someone who's also going to be needy and desperate. I certainly hope so. I certainly hope that I attract an individual who is needy and desperate for me. <laughs> That's... Wow. You got a spark there. That's where the spark is. Mm-hmm. I've been there. It's a nice feeling. Or you might not attract anyone at all. Well, I will certainly not attract anyone if I have everything that I need. I need absolutely nothing from another individual. And you know what? They need nothing from me. So if that's a situation, I don't think I could ever attract anyone. Neither could you. It was, there's no reason for it, right? <laughs> That's definitely not someone you want, is a needy and desperate person. That's going to create a dysfunctional, codependent relationship. What are you talking about? A dysfunctional, codependent relationship. <laughs> That's exactly what we want. We want a codependent relationship. That's what a relationship is. You know what? I feel really sorry for this guy. Seriously. Well, you know what? You may not want to be dependent on another individual, but if you are going to get into a relationship, you better do it. Because that's the only way that you're going to have a relationship, is to be codependent. That's the definition of a relationship, being codependent. Holy shit! Where, this, where, where did this guy on the internet read this garbage? This is fabricated by forces who want to keep the gender separated, which they have been very successful at doing. And this is the kind of garbage that'll stop you from even wanting to get into a relationship. I mean, I'm not saying that getting into a relationship is going to make you happy. It may make you absolutely miserable. Okay? And I'm here for that as well. To deal with those situations as well. But if you want to get into, if your goal is to be in a fulfilling, I'm talking viscerally, I'm talking way deep with depth, fulfilling, emotionally, relationship, you have to be codependent. Instead, what you want is you want to attract someone who's equally confident and stable and happy in themselves just as they are so that when you two come together things click and things are good holy shit this guy has made the words codependent the phrase codependent he has given it really bad connotations here and uh you know that's absolutely typical with this propaganda going out there and and they've been very successful at at i mean look at all the singles look at uh people cannot even even get into a relationship in the first place it's not even a, a matter of failed relationships they can't even get into a relationship because of garbage like this codependent is a bad word now And he uses, uh, he uses buzzwords like confident, independent, stable, happy, in yourself, happy with yourself. This is what single women, childless single women want to hear. That's who he's talking to. 
And all the type B bunnies also drink it up. Because it has this consoling effect. Don't worry about not having a partner because they can't make you happy anyway. You have to make yourself happy. This is the garbage that's been going around ever since they brought us feminism. You don't need another person. You don't need a you don't need a man. You don't need a woman. <sighs> well, you know what? What I would say is you weigh the negatives and the positives, the advantages and the disadvantages. And if you intellectually and logically and uh, practically, pragmatically decide the type of life that you're going to lead, it's perfectly fine. But if you have this desire, this longing to be in a relationship, then don't lie to yourself. Like this guy is lying to himself. This guy has never been in a relationship. Nothing profound any, any, anyway. Nothing long term. He would never talk this way. Because for one thing, I don't know anybody like the people that he describes and, the, and, 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 and what he's implying that you should be. I don't know anybody like that who exists. Where the hell are these people? I want to get away from them. They don't exist. They don't exist. They may pretend. They may masquerade as being those individuals like I think he is trying to masquerade. Which is, I can see right through it. But these people don't exist. And if they do exist, they don't want you. They have no need for you, for your uniqueness, for your abilities, for whatever you are willing and able to give. They have no need for it. And they're certainly not going to give you anything. It's all a give. It's give from both sides. What the hell is this guy talking about? Now this goes deeper too. The reason that you do not want to be in this needy, desperate position is because actually what you're doing is you're being inauthentic to yourself. You're not really in touch with the fact that you can be happy by yourself. Well, here again, if you can be happy by yourself, then why are we even talking about relationships? It shouldn't even be a topic of discussion, right? Because we can all be happy with ourselves, which is by ourselves. Inauthentic? You mean insincere? If you totally open up and disclose your needs, disclose what you're missing in your life, and indicate that the individual that you've met means the world to you in and, and they can fulfill those voids that you have. That's being inauthentic? That's the total opposite. It's the antithesis of lying. What you're doing here is pretense. What you're doing here is you're lying to yourself and you want to get others to lie to themselves. That's what you're doing. Because you think it's going to make you feel better and those watching you are going to make themselves feel better through lying. That's not being authentic. Pretending to be something that you're not. Pretending 
and and trying to imply that somebody can can uh, fill their own voids no it goes way deeper than that you can't do it you can't do it and it's a very good thing that you can't do it because if you could do it you wouldn't need anybody you could just live in your own bubble in your own shell and that that way you will be totally out of touch with reality because you you would have no perspective you would never have a mirror that you could look into and see what you actually look like it's insanity so this is the ultimate form of sincerity and openness is if you are conscious and you admit to your voids. This is what introspection is and, and being totally aware of what you need. And what you're actually looking for is you're looking for a crutch and you're using this other person even though you call it love and you call it romance and fulfillment. Actually what you're doing is you're using that other person as a crutch to fill a void in your own ego. No, you are using it as a crutch. You're using it as a crutch, as a form of solace, to comfort yourself, to deny your own needs. You're in, engaged in assuagement. And here's the thing, here's the really mind-blowing thing, is that even if you get that person, and you find that perfect person to fit that hole, that void that you have in yourself, it's not actually going to work. It's no different than going out there, for example, and you know that stereotypical businessman that goes out there and tries to uh, dominate the corporate ladder and tries to earn a million dollars and thinks that that's going to make him happy. And then when he gets to the end of that whole journey, he finds out that he's no happier than when he started. That's very, very true from a money perspective, but it's also very true from a relationship perspective. If you think that somebody else is going to come in there and fulfill you, fulfill that gap in your ego, it's not going to happen. And here's why. Because you're actually running away from something. There's something within you, within your own psychology, that you're not facing up to. I think it's you who's not facing up to something, not facing up to acknowledging your own needs. And how about if uh, in a relationship, one gets satisfaction in filling the voids of the other? Why are you ignoring that? And when you avoid that by just going and getting a quick fix of sex or companionship or love or marriage or starting a family, whatever that is, all that's doing is that's putting a band-aid over a much deeper wound that you have within yourself. So he identifies wanting to uh, get sex, companionship, love, marriage, or starting a family. He identifies that as being some type of a wound, some kind of a problem inside of yourself. And uh, let me tell you, if this is your problem that you want to get these things, then I think you're on the right track because you're motivated to get these things. And you're going to go out and look for it. And obviously he's looking for it. He's not getting it. So he's going to decide that he's going to deny it all. And says, "Wow, well, I don't need it anyway. I can make myself happy." See, this is the this is the same message that we've been told. I I heard this 20 years ago. This exact message. This guy didn't come up with it. Okay. Uh, as a quick fix for your wound, for your problem inside. Maybe sex can be used for that. But how in the hell are you going to use companionship, love, starting a family, marriage? How the hell are you going to use that as a quick fix? Those are not quick fixes. That's what you're looking for, my friend. And you're not getting it. Because honestly, you do not need anyone to be happy. And this applies for everybody in the entire world. This is the excuse the reasoning that every single individual who are single has to say this is the only thing they can use and you know what I feel their pain I know the situation but it's false it's phony 
And this guy is being phony. He's be being dishonest to himself. You can be completely happy all by yourself. You do not need anyone to fulfill you. And if you feel like that's not true for you, well, then I've got a shocking revelation. And that is because you have not done enough introspection and have not figured out what your quirks are, what your limiting beliefs are, what your ego deficiencies are. You have not done enough personal development work to get that part of your life handled. What exactly are quirks, limiting beliefs, and ego deficiencies? What the hell are those things? And where did this guy get that from? How about you just being lonely, alone, ungratified because you have not met your biological prerogatives, your instinctual needs? That's much easier to understand and it's much more tangible, is it not? How about the satisfaction of being able to fill someone's voids? How about somebody having needs for you? Isn't that much easier to understand? How about finding that situation, finding that opportunity? So what I'm telling you is, get that part of your life handled. Be detached and you will be attractive. Just listen to what this guy said. Be detached and then you will be attractive. PUA, pick up artist training for the bunny. Wow, be detached and then you will be attractive. To whom? A woman? I don't think so. That is not how female nature functions. Mm -mm. <laughs> no, 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 no. I think this guy's got to learn about female nature first before he talks about relationships. He has to have an understanding of how a woman functions. Here's the PUA, the pickup artist coach that's coming out from this guy. He's expressing it, what he really is. <laughs> if you're detached, you will be attractive. No, if you're detached emotionally, you will never be attractive to a woman. Never, ever, ever, never. That's the first rule. No woman wants a man who is detached. And an alpha male is definitely not detached. An alpha male puts complete emotion into everything he does. Emotional detachment does not define the alpha male. So not only will you be attractive, you'll also be fulfilled. This guy has definitely taken PUA training. Um, how in the heck are you going to be fulfilled if you're detached? Seriously. No woman is ever attracted to someone who is emotionally detached. Quite the opposite. They want you to be very, very responsive to every emotional need that she has. Now, of course, it's, it's, uh, self-serving on the part of the woman but like it or not it actually works it works out because men have the instinct of provide and protect which women do not have definitely not towards their partners so it gives the fulfillment that comes from the guy having the opportunity or being given the opportunity to protect and provide. Now, some are going to not want to hear that, but it's true. And you know the alpha male? They particularly uh, get a lot of satisfaction from protecting and providing. And that's when the man will be fulfilled. 
like it or not. But with the attractiveness thing, what's attractive to the opposite sex, to guys and to girls, is to be able to be completely authentic, 100% authentic. And to be a completely 100% authentic. Well, you're not talking about being authentic. You're talking about lying. You're talking about the guy being a fucking liar. Or even the woman being a liar. You're, 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 you're saying start off a relationship based on lies. Based, based on masquerading as being somebody that you're not. Because because there's nobody, I've never met anybody like the people that you're trying to portray here. I've never met anybody who was uh, confident, independent, happy, and stable. Nobody. That's the truth. None of us are those things. And if we can get into a relationship that brings us closer to being that way, we've got a winner. Now, it doesn't happen often. You got to get the right person. You got to fall in love. And when you fall in love, you feel it. You feel it. It really has nothing to do with ego. It has to do with actually relinquishing your ego. What he's talking about, the self-contained, self-actualized, totally aloof, emotionally detached individual, he's talking about somebody who's all about their own ego. When you're in a relationship, you're caring for another individual. It has a lot to do with completion. Completion, completing yourself. Maslow came up with this concept of self-actualization, of fully developing and using one's own abilities to their utmost potential. However, what this guy is saying is that you have to do all that and become fully content, happy, and at peace with yourself prior to getting into a relationship independently in a vacuum outside of a relationship see that is never the situation because outside of a relationship you are in a bubble and you don't have the perspective of anyone else around you who you are intimately involved with and who cares for you and you care for them. You simply would not be getting a true picture of your own abilities, of your own identity, being the sociopath that this guy is promoting. You have to be able to be confident in who you are and you have to be able to let people come and go into your life without needing to clutch onto them and cling to them and hold them. In the world of the single, uh, you can't clutch onto anyone. You can't hold anyone. You're just simply not able to achieve that. But that is the definition of a relationship, is it not? To have a mutual need for each other. Now, this guy doesn't understand that because he is a single guy who's probably never been in a relationship and he's trying to excuse himself trying to justify his situation well you can be confident in who you are if you're going to be lying to yourself and you can be sure that no one's coming into your life if you're a fraud if you're an emotional fraud and you know what they're going to find that out in a very short time and that'll be the end of it. Even if you do have a chance to fool them into believing that you are confident, independent, stable, and very happy. Being yourself. Mm. By yourself. You're going to be discovered very quickly.
and you will remain single. Now this applies whether you're single right now or you're, you're in some sort of bur- girlfriend, boyfriend relationship or even if you're married, all right? Even if you're married, you should not be attached to your spouse. You should not need that spouse to be in your life. You should not need that spouse to be in your life. Wow. What is this guy talking about? I don't even think he knows what he's talking about. But if he's making himself feel better, the whole idea is for both sides to want to have the other in their life. The opposite of that is not wanting to have the other in your life. And that'll bring the relationship to an end very quickly. If you do, then I got a very high probability of predicting that that marriage or that relationship is going to go sour within a few years, maybe even sooner, or maybe within five years or 10 years. But in the end, it's not going to be able to last. It will not last only if it's one-sided. If both sides desire each other and have a need for each other equally, it's going to last indefinitely. Because it's built on something that's fake. It's not authentic. You cannot be authentic with someone that you need something from. I think this guy doesn't know the meaning of authentic. Uh, If you're pretending to be happy, or even if you are happy, and you don't need anything from the other individual, as I said, the, there's no relationship there. There's no need for a relationship and it'll never happen. Uh, being authentic is uh, uh, showing your vulnerabilities, showing your needs, disclosing what you need from the other person. And at the same time, they have to do it to you as well and, and demonstrate what they need from you and that's how the relationship is built the relationship is built on need and that's what authenticity is generally what you really need to come into a deep realization of and this is something that i've been doing as i've been doing more meditation more enlightenment work on myself is i've been really coming to this deep understanding that there is nothing that anyone in the world can offer me that i cannot offer myself Yes, there is. It's just that throughout all these years, you haven't found it and you don't know how to find it. That's what your problem is. And the same goes for your audience. There is nothing that anyone in the world can offer him that he cannot offer himself. Well, there's no relationship there, buddy. There's no relationship. There's no need for it. Like... You know, this video, he's talking about need, that you shouldn't be needy. If you're not needy, then you don't need a relationship. As simple as that. End of the story. End of the message. Simplified right down to pure logic. Well, wait a minute. That's exactly what he's saying. He's trying to convince himself and convince his audience who also want to convince themselves and he wants to convince the whole world to believe that he doesn't need a relationship. How many times have I met single women or had relationships with single women who claim, oh, I'm not looking for a relationship. I'm not really looking for a relationship. What is this compensatory behavior? That's what it is. It's the way they can cope. The way they can cope with their needs. Their unfulfilled needs. Again, I'm not criticizing anybody. I'm not disparaging anybody. We've all been there. Or we're right there right now. But... Is denying it going to make it better? Is it going to make you be able to live with yourself and your condition easier? You are denying reality? Yeah. It works. 
it works as a drug or to use his word a crutch a temporary fix to deny reality but it's not authentic it's the opposite of being authentic more meditation and more enlightenment work is needed on his part i guess if you can give yourself everything that anybody else can give you then why bother getting into a relationship why bother the risk risk of so much loss emotional loss financial loss uh, the loss in time and effort years of your life why bother if you can do it all for yourself <laughs> Uh, I think he needs more meditation and more enlightenment work. Now, of course, that doesn't mean that uh, I can fix my own plumbing or I can repair my own car or I can grow my own food. I need people for that. Sure, we depend on each other for those kinds of things. We're in a, we live in a society. What I'm talking about is the psychological dependency. You do not need someone to fulfill you psychologically. At least you shouldn't. Right now, that is most likely not the case for you. It takes a lot of work to get to the point where you're really there. I'm not there myself. I'm working on this right now very actively. He's working on this very actively. Well, let me help you out. You will never be there. There's no such thing as somebody who doesn't have emotional and psychological needs. Nobody. The people you're talking about are downright scary because they don't exist. It's a horror show. Somebody so fulfilled through themselves that they need nobody else doesn't exist. Doesn't matter how much meditation you do, how enlightened you get, you will never get there or be there. But you need to start getting more awareness of this. Is that the more psychological dependencies you have on your parents, on your siblings, on your spouse, on your children, on your boss, on anyone in life, as long as you think that they can really give you something of value. What's this? You shouldn't think that someone can give you something of value? Well, what the hell is a relationship? A relationship is being close, intimate, with somebody that can give you something of value. Now, that doesn't even, is not even limited to romantic relationships. That's even true for a guy and, and the buddies he has or that he hangs out with or, or women and their girlfriends that they hang out with. Uh, erroneous or not, you are with those people because you think that they can give you something of value. Without it, there's no reason for any type of association. And conversely, and this has to be present, you have to give them something of value. Then what's going to happen is you're going to, you're going to feel a need to sacrifice your own authenticity. You're not going to be able to express yourself the way that you want to express yourself. Okay, this is where uh, this guy really gets confused. I, I don't think he knows anything what he's talking about. This is pure pop psych. This is pure cultural Marxism, social engineering that he's a victim of, basically. But he doesn't realize it. He doesn't see the whole entire picture as to where his opinions and where his narrative is is coming from and who feeds it to him uh he's trying to console himself uh, being uh, uh, most likely uh, willing to bet that he's a single guy he's been single all of his life he is uh he's got no uh no children uh no long-term relationships and he is very much like the thousands tens of thousands hundreds of thousands millions of middle-aged women that he's talking to um 
on this channel, I mainly talk to men. Um, but I am certain that he mainly talks to, to women. His audience is women. And uh, they want to console themselves. They want to make themselves believe that they don't need anybody. Oh, I don't need anybody. Uh, because it's too late for them. Uh, the window, that small window of a mere 15 years is done. Uh, and as I spoke before uh, regarding uh, single women and middle-aged single women and my experience with them is that they are really, in, after a certain period of time, they're incapable of being in a relationship. They just, uh, they just don't know how to do it. They're just so used to being with themselves, by themselves, uh, <clears throat> that they, they actually do not have the skills to spend their life with another individual, which is very difficult. And also, hormonally, there are 15 years of, um, of mating potential is over. Reproductive potential is over. So this, is a, uh, this whole video is a message, and I'm sure that everything that he does is to console uh, the men and women in this predicament. And now he uses buzzwords like authenticity. What the hell does this have to do with authenticity? You are authentic if you confront your needs. I know exactly what my needs are, and I'm sure that everybody else knows exactly what your needs are. And uh, some, of them, some of us are going to get... Uh, part of that fulfilled through life a lot of us will never get any of it fulfilled um all we can do is cope um we will get into relationships and unfortunately those relationships will be disappointing uh they will not fulfill us in the way that we had hoped those relationships would uh, we become disenchanted with the individuals in our relationships, but it has nothing to do with authenticity. He's, 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 he's basically a student of Jewish psychology here, all right? And there's so much of it. I mean, it, it dominates psychology. It dominates behavior and everything in that field of pop psych has an agenda, has a message, has a behavioral alteration goal, and he is drinking it all up. He's taking it all in and he's passing it on to thousands of people who have been a victim of this social engineering, which basically says, you don't need anybody, you don't need a relationship, Stay single and do not reproduce. That's the message. And he's saying, that's perfectly fine. So again, I keep saying this over and over again. If there's no need, there cannot be a relationship. Simple as that. So he's saying authenticity and he's saying, what else is he saying? You cannot express yourself in an authentic way way what the hell does that mean pretending that you don't have any needs that's authentic that's the epitome of dishonesty being dis disingenuous to yourself you're lying to yourself you're fooling yourself and a lot of people don't want to hear this i know that but i deal with reality here right that's what I deal with. Nature and reality. This guy is dealing with fantasy. Fantasy. Because it makes himself feel good about his situation. And the same for his entire audience. And that is what's actually most attractive and most magnetic within people. Okay, this is when this guy gets really comedic. This is like... I can't even believe I'm hearing this. 
I can't even believe I'm hearing this, but it's funny. <laughs> when you see people like celebrities or you see someone that you're really attracted to, the reason that is is because that person is totally outcome independent, right? They're comfortable being themselves and they're happy by themselves. They actually are happy. They're not faking it. This is not some sort of fake detachment. This is a real, I am happy with my life. I really don't need anything else to complete it. <laughs> Celebrities are actually happy and they're not faking it. Oh no, no. When it comes to totally authentic individuals, let's look at celebrities, people, because we know how authentic they are. I, I can't even believe he's using this example. Oh my God. This has got to be a comedy. This is a comedy video. Let's, let's use celebrities as our role models. Okay? <laughs> they are authentic. <laughs> to complete it. If you want to come in here and you want to kind of intermingle with what I've got going on, then let's do that. Let's see if it'll work. We'll try that. And that's the basis of a strong relationship. And you know what? This is where he gets really delusional. I, I can't even believe that this is for real. He's saying that if you want to come in here and intermingle, that's fine with me. <laughs> it doesn't work like that. Let me tell you something. Some males may have a fantasy of this. Come into my life. I've got everything going for me. I got a business. I got a career. I'm making money. I'm single. I'm independent. Bitch, you want to come in? Yeah, all right. Just don't get in my way. You can come in and intermingle with me. Let me tell you something. That never, ever works with women. Oh, my God. Women will run. at the speed of a cheetah away from that situation. Women call that kind of a guy a douchebag. Oh, you know why? Because the guy is not giving. That's when the guy is not able or willing to give anything. And if you don't give anything to a woman, you will never have a woman. You'll have a woman for one night, maybe a week. That's it. That's it. So this guy is kind of a kind of a combination of uh, MGTOW, Type B Bunny, of course, and also he has a male fantasy, however, that many MGTOWs hold. Uh, he's he's also a PUA in some way. He he's 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 got all these delusions, negative influences, misinformation, misdirection, unfortunately, that have collected in his in his brain, and he's trying to make sense of it all and become his fantasy delusion, right? And uh, it doesn't work in reality. Because women want one thing. They want you to give. On every level. Well, give in utility and give emotionally. Women get turned on as to how much they can get from you. There is no such thing as you can come in and intermingle. That is totally the opposite. It's totally the opposite in reality what this guy is talking about. No woman would ever stand for that for the shortest time. No woman ever wants to intermingle. And no man does either. Uh, we're just wasting our time here. Well, what the hell is intermingling? We want to seduce women. And women want to be seduced. And that takes emotion to do it. The reason a lot of men can, cannot seduce women is because they're not emotionally expressive or giving. But no intermingling. Women want commitment, not just simple intermingling. Sorry, guy. I think I know why you're not in a relationship. Then he says that 
for somebody to come in and intermingle with what a man has going on is the basis of a strong relationship? My God! Absolutely! The opposite! God! You try that with a woman, and I know you haven't. You try with that woman. And that woman is going to think that you're the biggest douchebag in the world. You won't have a relationship, guaranteed. You better keep consoling yourself, making yourself feel good, protecting yourself with your delusions, because you will never, ever have a relationship. A woman is all about need. Every woman is about need, and every woman is about what she can take, and what you're willing to give, and capable of giving. This is precisely the criteria by which every woman evaluates every man. Your value and what you're willing to give. What you got and what you're giving. This is the selection process of every woman, every female that she employs, deploys at the time of selecting any potential male. How you as the male can effectively give her what she wants, fulfill her needs. If there is nothing that you can give, if you have, you have no value for a woman, as simple as that. Um, why are men not successful with women? Because you have no value. Increase your value and you'll get women. Uh, value is not just in terms of how much money you have. Because you're going to have to be willing to share that and to give that. Generous, a generous man. What a generous man means is that she will have access to what you have, access to your value. Come in and intermingle with me. Ha ha ha. And you can, ah, you may be able to even suck my cock while you're at it. Isn't that a great price for you, bitch? Yeah. I think this guy had some PUA training. I think so. You know what? If it doesn't work, something doesn't go. Right then, we're just gonna we're just gonna like bounce our separate ways, and no hard feelings because I'm happy. I expect you to be happy, and that's just how it is, right? It's like two non-needy entities coming into contact with each other and just seeing how it's gonna play out. Well, I'll tell you how it's going to play out. I'm happy. I expect you to happy. That's just the way it is. Wow, a relationship is based on need, especially. Uh, the need of a woman, okay? A woman will not even enter a relationship unless she could see the potential to fulfill her needs. And her needs are going to be, I keep saying, it's going to have two elements, emotional and utility, utilitarian. For that to even function, for the framework of relationship to even even uh, exist for the for the framework uh, a needy male has to be present has to be in the equation a needy male and uh, now of course many people including this guy uh, gives the word needy male a very bad connotation so everybody's gonna say oh a needy male oh my god we don't want a needy male. yes you are a fucking needy male even if you don't want to admit it to yourself you're a needy male and naturally you should be a needy male you need female validation now isn't that the biggest need that you could possibly have like this guy doesn't know what he's talking about. He's making it up. He's reading magazines directed at middle-aged single women, childless single women. That's what he's reading. 
He basically is a middle-aged, childless woman. That's what he is. Psychologically, emotionally, and socially. And he's trying to be that. He's not trying to be a healthy male. He's trying to be one of those women. Which is absolutely insane. He's going to get nowhere anyway. I mean, he's fighting nature. First of all, he's never going to be successful with women. Because this is not how... This is what I'm trying to tell you. This is not how women operate. The total opposite of what this guy is presenting. This guy is presenting the PUA fantasy of a relationship. I've got everything, I'm keeping my distance from you, woman, and you're not getting anything that I have. I own a house, I own my own truck, I've got my own fishing rods, and you know what? Wanna tag along, come fishing with me, maybe suck my cock in the boat. I'm okay with that, but that's as far as you're gonna get. You think that any woman is going to go for that? Any woman? My God. Now, I'm worried about you guys because if you don't analyze this on this level with a little depth, just a little depth, please, you're going to fall for this. And at the same time, I am highly curious and surprised if women listening to this on a deeper level if they're not actually totally offended with what this guy's saying what this guy's actually saying that well he's being fair and he's saying neither side should give anything or need anything from the other side but for a woman this is very offensive because he's advocating he's alluding to a situation where the man doesn't need anything and conversely doesn't have to give anything to the woman. Now, to any woman, that's highly fucking offensive. This is the type of guy that this guy presents. He paints a picture of this guy, this fantasy, highly fulfilled male, independent, Self-assured male, which every woman wants to avoid. Because no woman, as the whore, as the archetypical whore, which all women are, there is no way that they're going to waste their time with the individual that this guy is fantasizing and presenting. There is no way. That's the worst thing that a woman would ever encounter. In fact, women will not encounter this individual. Because they, they're going to be able to tell right away. Women are going to be able to tell right away. If any male even approaches what this guy is presenting here and advocating here, no woman will ever waste their time. Now, they're willing to exchange their body. But women have needs. Very strong needs. And therefore women have expectations. From need, very quickly comes expectation. So what is a relationship? A relationship is a woman making the choice, making the selection, directing the association or even the potential to an association from the very first moment. Just the way she reacts to you. You grab a woman's ass. She looks at you. And then she determines her reaction. It could be... Uh, the guy could be labeled a creep. Or the guy could be labeled as somebody who's desirable. So that the initiation you made towards her uh, would either go in one of two directions. Either it'll be appealing, because there's a potential for value there. 
or it will be totally repulsive. Now the act itself would be constant. That would be a constant. That would it would, it would, it would be the same act, but it would be interpreted by the woman as one or the other. Based on her expectations as to how effectively you can fill her voids, you can meet her needs. A lot of the interpretation will be determined based on her need and her expectations and the potential for her to realize that from any particular male who is advancing towards her. See, being in a relationship with any woman is uh, very much the same as um, approaching a prostitute. Now, a prostitute will tell you to fuck off if she determines that you're playing games and you have no money in your pocket or you're not willing to give her that money. Uh, she may even call the cops on you and say you try to rape her or whatever it is. Uh, because she has needs and she has expectations. It's all based on that. So any woman functions as the whore. And the prize is, uh, the bottom line is her body, uh, which is interpreted by the male. Not, this is what women don't understand. It's not interpreted in terms of uh, a purely uh, a sexual exercise. Uh, it, is, it is interpreted by the male very importantly as female validation so she's gonna exchange female validation uh, for which all that she has to do is willingly by consent spread her legs for you open up her legs and that's the exchange right so it is no different from the whore on the street from the street walker right and uh, so this is why fundamentally every woman is a whore and uh, naturally, by nature, they are. It's, it's the definition of a woman uh, when it comes right down to it. And uh, because it's not based on love. It's not based on emotion from the woman. Uh, a woman doesn't function in terms of love. I mean, how many women have I heard from that they have never been in love in their whole entire life? And that is the norm. That is the normal functioning of a woman. Uh, women may fantasize or they may masquerade and present themselves and um, feign the female idealism, the ideal, idealistic identity of what a female should be, but that is not what they are. It is completely an act. So, a woman, the, the, to keep to the, to the topic here, is a woman functions based on her need. Her huge list of needs that she has of the man that she is willing to spread her legs for and to reproduce with. This is why so often the man cannot live up to female expectations. Basically, the man cannot fulfill her needs. So she gets out of the relationship and with the belief that she deserves better. And where does that leave the man, right? So what this guy is saying is complete disinformation and it's very dangerous it's very damaging versus the way that a normal relationship works and this is what i would define as a dysfunctional relationship is two people coming together needing something from the other no that is a normal relationship two people coming together needing things from the other and very importantly receiving things from the other if Receiving doesn't happen. If the acquisition doesn't happen, the relationship is over. The woman will see to that very quickly. Yes, you got it. That is a normal relationship. That is the only 
definition of a relationship. And any woman listening to this guy, if they're honest and if they're perceptive, they're going to be very, very offended at what this guy is advocating. Because if this is this is the relationship this guy is going to realize, the woman is getting nothing. Nothing. And no woman ever wants that. As I have said repeatedly, no woman will ever be a free whore. They are whores, but never free whores. Those are the loser women that women themselves despise. I need sex from you. You need security from me. You want comfort from me. You want love from me. I want excitement from you and I want uh, a partner from you and I want money from you. You know, when you've got this kind of trade, this kind of tit for tat. That's what a relationship is. That was just the definition of a healthy relationship. Yes, healthy relationship. That's the way it's structured. That's the way it's built. That's the way it succeeds, like it or not. Every relationship is no different from the encounter of the John with the prostitute on the street. There's no difference. It's an exchange. When it comes right down to the very basics, the very structure, the underpinnings of every relationship, it's an exchange based on needs. And if either side falls short in delivering the demands of the other, the relationship is finished. So yes, I want this, you want that, I'll give you this, you give me that. And if you can keep this constantly going, you will have a relationship. He got it right there, didn't he? <laughs> but he doesn't realize it. That's how little he knows. It's being in a relationship with a whore. Relationship with a whore. It's all it is. Once you understand that. But it's much more difficult than being in a relationship with a street prostitute. They're both whores, they're both women. But the needs of one differs from the needs of the other. But being in the relationship with a prostitute, it's easier because all you gotta do is open your wallet and give her the money. What makes a relationship hard is you have to deliver more than just money. Or if you're just gonna deliver money, you better deliver a lot of money then you don't have to give anything else. But in most relationships, men are limited to how much resources they have. So they have to give other things other than just money, their time, their attention, their emotion, their full commitment. And they have to speak the language of the woman so it becomes very, very difficult being in a relationship where money is not the only commodity of exchange. Tit for tat going, then neither party is going to be able to be completely authentic because what's going to happen is you're always going to have that fear deep down that, well, hold on, if I do something that that person disapproves of, that that person doesn't like, then I'm going to risk upsetting them. I'm going to do something that maybe they're going to stop loving me. Maybe they're going to get angry, they're going to get upset, and they're going to pull something away from me, right? They're going to pull their love away. They're going to pull their, uh, their, their comfort away from me. And when you're in that kind of relationship, that's a relationship based on fear. And that's a dysfunctional relationship. So uh, yeah, welcome to the world of relationships. That is exactly how a relationship functions. Well, that is not a dysfunctional relationship. That is the definition of the relationship because every relationship according to this guy's criteria 
is a dysfunctional relationship. And my viewpoint has always been that every relationship is innately dysfunctional. There is no way around it because you've got two individuals, two genders that are forced to live together who are absolutely incompatible with each other in every way. Emotionally incompatible, intellectually incompatible most of the time. Sexually definitely very incompatible. So what kind of a fantasy world is this guy trying to fool himself with and his audience? This is the crime that he's committing. This is disinformation to the highest order. Every relationship is dysfunctional. There is no way around it. You, you get into a relationship, you're going to be getting into a situation that's very dysfunctional. Regardless of how anyone is trying to deny that fact and put up a, a, a false front for appearance purposes specifically for purely appearance they are simply posturing and people need to lie to themselves first and then they lie to others it's in order to comfort themselves and to appease themselves and to console themselves everything except facing reality people will do everything just so that they don't have to face reality. And that is exactly what this guy is doing right here. That's what he's doing. But it's false information. It's misleading himself and everyone who's listening to him. Of course, if women do not get what they expect to get or what they feel they sh deserve to get from a man, uh, a woman does shut right down. So welcome. You should try it sometime. The world of relationships. <laughs> a woman shuts down uh, emotionally and sexually. If she doesn't get what she should. She thinks she should get. However irrational and unfair and unbalanced and uh, unequal since we talk about equality in relationships to a woman that doesn't matter because a woman feels entitled is absolutely self-centered and solipsistic that's the definition of a woman she doesn't give a shit about equality because naturally that is what defines her. So the point here is, who is this guy actually talking to? Who is he lecturing to? Who is he advising, men or women? It sounds to me that he's actually lecturing to women. <laughs> but he, he does not dare admit that because most of his audience are middle-aged, single, childless women. Whose clocks are ticking or have actually stopped ticking. So if you want to be really authentically attractive. Authentically attractive, what the hell does that mean? Uh, I think we'll take any type of attraction we can get. Then what you got to do is you got to really work on this. And that means working on yourself, working on your own psychology, working on your own quirks. You know, why is it that you feel that you need that love so badly? Why do you thirst after it? Why do you need that companionship so much? Because we're human beings and we have an emotional makeup. Maybe that's why we need the love so badly. Unlike you, of course, you don't need love at all. You just want to mingle. <laughs> So this guy is trying to make himself believe that he doesn't need companionship and he doesn't need love. And therefore, he's, 
He's not even really looking for a relationship because he's not desperate for a relationship. He can take it or leave it. This is the uh, self-deception, rationalization that many single childless women use. And that's exactly what he's feeding them see, as a uh, support mechanism for them. And that's why he's got lots of subscribers because he's... Basically, he's not holding them accountable. He's saying, you're fine. You see this agenda? See this uh, consistency in the uh, narrative that you're hearing from him? You, you hear it everywhere around you. Accept yourself. Love yourself first for who you are. You don't need anyone else. You are beautiful the way you are. Even if you're 300 pounds. You're still beautiful, and whoever doesn't think you're beautiful, he's the sick one. See, he's feeding them this false sense of acceptance and uh, this fake state of self-contentment, which none of these people have, and neither does he. And he will never have it using the method that he does, and he's promoting but it is comforting to hear for himself and his audience. It's not reality. You come to me for reality, you go to him if you want fantasy, bullshit. Why are you not comfortable in who you are? Why can't you be comfortable just by yourself without needing anybody else? Well, you can become comfortable by yourself to some extent and you're pretty well gonna be a lot of people are forced to be by themselves uh, even if they don't want to take a, a, the risk or make the sacrifices of being in a relationship where every relationship is dysfunctional by nature, by definition, innately. There's no escaping it. So people are going to either be forced to be single or they're gonna consciously make that choice to be single. But that does not mean that they will not have needs and their needs will magically disappear if they accept themselves, see? And that's what he's implying here, that you can train yourself you can transform yourself not to have any needs. And then you get into a relationship when you don't feel you have any needs. Then there's no reason for you to... Why would you ever fucking want to get into a relationship if you have no needs? You don't, and if you don't uh, expect, expect anything from the other individual that you're getting in a relationship with. So what he is advocating is that you shouldn't have any needs. And you shouldn't have any expectations when you get into a relationship, <laughs> which is absolutely ludicrous. It's the opposite of what binds two people in a relationship. That's the glue. That's the basis of desire for the other person needs and expectations why would you even need to get into relationship and face all the negatives that are inherent about every relationship nothing this guy talks about has to do with reason here it has to do with a false sense of happiness and a false sense of acceptance. <laughs> Instead of instructing people where their faults are, making them accountable for where they made the mistake, making them learn, making them face the reality of their situation, what they look like, what their personality is, what their behavioral patterns constitute which prevents them from going to the next step and maintaining nurturing 
a long-term relationship. He's doing none of that. So the bottom line is he's being the opposite of being constructive. He's being totally unconstructive and uninformative. And that's his crime. What he's doing is he's teaching you to cope using a false sense of contentment and rationalization based on fantasy. That's what he's doing. Why can't you be comfortable just by yourself without needing anybody else? He's trying to justify and um, normalize his um, inadequacy and his discontentment because he's actually saying, why do you need a relationship in the first place? So, his message is not for anybody to get into a relationship because if you're going to get into a relationship where you have you no needs, you deny your own needs, or let's say you are a uh, an animate object, you're a robot, and you have no needs, and you have no expectations of the other individual, you're never going to make it in a relationship. There's going to be nothing there for you to be in a relationship for. And that goes for the other side as well, for your partner, at least prospective partner. There, there was going to be nothing there for anything to even trigger any hormones. Definitely not on the side of the female. The female has many needs and even more expectations of the male. So this is absolute fabrication, inaccuracy, fantasy, and lies. And let's not forget that he's being totally self-defeating because with this type of attitude, he will never be able to even establish a relationship. He's doomed. But he's actually trying to normalize the fact that he's single and I would say 90% of his audience is, is, is exactly in the same situation that he is in. They're trapped. They're trapped in singlehood. And I know there's millions like him, but he's not giving them reality. He's giving them a drink of alcohol. And he's saying, you know what, take this drug. It's going to make you feel better right away. But the thing is, your discontentment and your needs and your voids and your desperation will not disappear through his solution. See what he's doing? He's trying to justify to himself... And to console himself for being single. He's trying to make him convince himself, along with his audience, that you're perfectly fine being single. Because a lot of them have no chance of ever establishing a relationship. Definitely in, in today's political and uh, culturally Marxist climate which has brought us to this point where you know the world the western world is filled with singles like masses and masses of singles who are so separated from each other they're so divided they're so alienated towards each other so i can understand the situation that he's in and what thousands of people are in you can't blame them it's not their doing it's the poisoning it's nothing less than the poisoning of human relations on earth and he's doing absolutely nothing to explain this to bring understanding and a light to why it's happening and who's behind it none of that exists for for this guy he has no clue about any of it He's just saying, accept yourself. You're beautiful. You're doing fine. You don't need a relationship. You know why? Because you can't get one anyway. You know why? 
because of the state of the world. All these masses of singles, millions of them all over the world. You would tend to think that, oh my God, it's, it's a buyer's market. But it's not. Because all these singles, the two genders, are alienated from each other. And he's not going into any of that so that people understand what is happening to them. How the world is functioning. Why it's happening. Why they are in the state the condition that they're in. He's doing none of it. See, that's the most important part of any topic. Why are you in the situation that you're in? Once you understand it, then you know how to go about it, to remedy the situation, how to work on it. You need understanding first. And he's providing none of that. It's such a lame, cliched, offering platitudes and pandering to a generic audience without giving anything tangible, anything profound for them to work with. That's what I hate about it. They've taken women and brainwashed women. And... Uh, since women are the selectors of uh, relationships, women are always in control of every relationship. Uh, they're the ones that they have to indoctrinate in order to fear and actually hate males. And they have done that very, very uh, effectively. So this guy is in, is in a personal predicament that he's in and he's, uh, you know, trying to justify it to himself that he doesn't need anybody else. I don't need anybody anyway. Your needs are still there. Your needs are not going to disappear regardless of what lie you tell yourself. And a lot of, a lot of men don't want to hear this either. It all depends is if you consciously make the decision that you're going to stay single. You're going to say to yourself, you know, it's just not worth my time and effort. And I'm not as horny as I used to be anyway. So fuck that. If you make that decision, you've made it for the right reasons. But if you're trying to lie to yourself, it's all you're doing is lying to yourself. Then all this is bullshit. And he's lying to himself. He wishes he was in a relationship. He's probably never been in one. But he's spreading false information. He's trying to protect his own emotions. And that's why it's disinformation. He's fooling himself first and he's fooling his audience. Now, the next point is that I really want you to create a happy life for yourself. So that means that if you're sitting home alone right now and you cannot be happy by yourself without going out and distracting yourself with some sort of stimulation, television, internet, sex, drugs, alcohol, whatever. If you're not able to just be comfortable and happy by yourself, then you've got some work to do. You have to be comfortable and happy by yourself. Okay, well, we're talking about forced singlehood uh, with forced singlehood is what most people are in you have to learn to cope uh, being by yourself and making yourself happy with what you got and this is in fact what his video is all about giving hope to individuals who find themselves in forced singlehood and getting them to cope with their situation. He's also offering quite a bit of uh, assuagement 
in that regard in order to um, make you believe that you can uh, make yourself happy without even having a relationship. You don't really even need a relationship. Who wants a relationship anyway? You don't need it. Look how happy you are by yourself. The situation has gotten so critical that he's actually offering techniques, strategies, in which people will be able to cope with their forced singlehood. Now, he would be authentic if he was to come out and actually say that. Maybe even entitle his video Coping Mechanisms and Strategies in Forced Singlehood. Uh, but he doesn't see it. Now, potentially, he's got a humongous audience, of course, because, as I said, it's uh, alarming. The number of singles there are everywhere in every country. It's absolutely alarming. This had never happened in the past. And you're going to ask, you're going to say, well, why not? What's the reason? Well, it's very simple. Keeping with the very topic that this guy is trying to besmirch disparage the very word what is it n e e d need it's all summed up in that one word need if you have no needs you have no reason for a relationship no purpose for a relationship you must have needs and you must acknowledge your needs he's denying his needs because he lost hope he knows that his chances are next to nothing of establishing a relationship and you know why you know why that is keeping with the word need He has come to the realization that nobody needs him. It doesn't mean he doesn't need anybody else. He very much does. I can see right through. That's my job, to see through. See through people. People are going to put up fronts all the time. But I take the mask off and I look at what's underneath. And he has a lot of needs. But he has become discouraged and hopeless, demoralized in finding anyone who will fulfill his needs and finding anyone who will give him the opportunity to fulfill their needs now if him or you or anybody else finds that situation where somebody can fulfill your needs and you are given the privilege, the satisfaction of fulfilling somebody else's needs, you will be in a sustainable long-term relationship. As simple as that. Who wants a relationship anyway? You don't need it. Look how happy you are by yourself. 
that's what he's trying to make you believe and that's precisely what his audience wants to hear and appreciates hearing from him however it's a coping mechanism it's nothing more than a support group that he's offering uh, because he's exactly in the same predicament as his audiences. Uh, what he's not addressing is uh, how everyone got to where they are. He's not touching that. He is not being authentic with himself or his audience. I touch that in my lectures. People say to me, well, we want to hear about female nature, you want to hear about relationships. Well, as you can see, all that has evaporated because everything is rooted in the political situation and how the most demonic people in the world have shaped your world to put you in the position that you find yourself in that all you got to hope for is a coping mechanism and you can watch this guy for that but it's a much bigger picture and not very many people are able to see the big picture. He should be telling you that uh, most people given the um, social structure that we're in find themselves in forced singlehood, uh, forced loneliness, solitary existence, and uh, hate make the best of it and it's actually what he's saying right here he's saying the exact same thing as the social marxist rulers our overlords are indoctrinating us with he's saying be an individual don't be part of any group don't be part of any structure don't be part of a family which is a powerful structure which would and has overthrown the Marxists before and it would overthrow the Marxists again so something that is to be prevented is for the individual to be part of any group or to form any association or collaboration or partnership with any other individual a big part of this is also includes your spirituality they want absolutely nothing to be in your soul they want you empty they want you to be an empty carcass totally isolated and totally defenseless so any religious beliefs any form of spirituality or any strength you will gain from it has to be abolished and eradicated. Again, you're by yourself. And you're powerless. And it can squish you like a bug at any time. And you didn't even exist to wipe out your existence you have no identity and you have no purpose and you have no significance whatsoever and they do that all through alienating the genders 
with the addition of even making gender ambiguous and to make you question your own gender which is your identity you question your own identity and pretty soon you don't have one now if that isn't diabolical I don't know what is identity and unity that's what they want to prevent because then they have power the Marxists themselves have their power in their insular cohesion racially centered group and that's what made them survive and thrive tremendously thrive have hegemony over the entire world just think about it imagine that hegemony over the entire world that's the very condition that they want to prevent you from reaching because an individual can very easily be controlled be intimidated be brainwashed be manipulated and be destroyed so the crime that he's permitting is he's saying don't worry about it. Be an individual and be proud of it. And celebrate your individuality. Individuality here not having the positive connotation that it usually does. It's a misnomer because what he means by individuality is isolation your isolation and powerlessness he wants to make you believe that it's the ideal situation for you to be alone and in fact you can make yourself very happy being alone you don't need anybody else anybody else can just mingle with you if they like forbid that you ever establish a close, intimate relationship, even with one individual, let alone group, society, nationality. No. It's not permitted. They will stomp on you with their boots if you ever try it. because if you have nationality if you have a racial identity you have power and you must be powerless meaningless disenfranchised, bastardized. You must be irrelevant. That's the only way they can rule over you and over the world. See how dangerous this guy is? He doesn't even know it. He's just a fucking dummy doesn't know the implications of what he's promoting being defenseless and vulnerable that's the way they want to have you well individuality is great but you also could be got to be part of a group you got to have your identity your group identity your group identity identification have your racial identity your spiritual rooting your spiritual affiliation you have to belong somewhere 
instead of making yourself happy by yourself, isolated and pretending that you're happy and you're independent and you're content and you don't need anybody else. Meanwhile, you belong nowhere and to no one. You see the tragedy in it all? And you think this happened randomly for no reason? You think the green haired girls and boys with tattoos and piercings just kind of appeared out of nowhere? You think they're the ones responsible for this world? And the condition we're in? They're victims just like everybody else. And you have to have your place in the family structure and what they have done the Marxists have removed this, have robbed you of your place in society other than a meaningless, obscure, isolated individual. Individual who will never make any mark in society and will be absolutely powerless in every way. Singlehood should not be mistaken for uh, somebody in a relationship. It's a very different matter. Uh, when you're in a relationship, as I said before, you have to concede. Both sides have to concede. And um, there's no such thing as uh, just making yourself happy. Uh, you have to actually make the other happy. Now, having said that, um, maybe some people don't want to hear uh, some people that have been living singlehood for a long time will not want to hear or it would sound very foreign to them the concept to make somebody else happy but when we're talking about a relationship which all relationships contrary to what this guy is saying all relationships are based on need and the uh, fulfillment of that need uh, that would be a long-term sustainable relationship um, just as much as you want the other person to make you happy, the other person wants you to make him or her happy. So it goes both ways, and that is the definition of a relationship. And what he's actually trying to say here is uh, you're stuck in singlehood the way he is. Um, your chances of establishing a relationship and re reproducing are... Uh, the probability for that is very small given the way um, society has been um, constructed and deconstructed and uh, altered and shaped uh, so that it actually makes it very hard I mean it is not the fault of the single individual um, or at least it is not entirely their fault uh, because every individual no matter how incompatible no matter how incompetent no matter how unattractive no matter how unproductive you may be you've got a you've got a pair out there for you you've got your second half out there it's 
it's there. It always has been. But see, everything is connected politically. Everything is connected. And everything was shaped by design deliberately to stop you from reproducing. No question. No question. To wipe you out. You don't believe me? Open your eyes and look around. Pay attention. Perceive what's going on around you. And then once you're informed, you come to the conclusion as to who is doing it. Who is behind it. You come to your own conclusion. Everything was designed to be against you. Establishing, even establishing a relationship has become impossible. It's like winning the lottery now. Maybe you'll be lucky. Maybe you'll be at the right place at the right time. But don't count on it. And that's what he's not addressing. He's not addressing the fact that need is the number one requirement for the existence of a relationship. What he's saying in turn, reality is the complete opposite of what he's saying. Everyone theoretically has a counterpart out there. The way they structured society, the way they built and changed and altered your value structure, the way they have weakened your constitution, your morality, the way they made society to be is that it's very, very difficult for people to have relationships. And it's difficult in every way you can think of. It's almost not even practical to be in a relationship these days. However, not being robots the way this guy is advocating, this guy is advocating for you to be an uh, inanimate object and not have emotions, not have human needs, not have a soul. And if you can freeze your soul, you will be able to cope with your singlehood very well is what he's actually saying they've made society now that it's not even practical uh, to be in a relationship and it, it has become dangerous to be in a relationship in terms of uh, legally financially and also emotionally because of the way uh, people have been um, indoctrinated and their opinions shaped in a very negative way um, that every hurdle has been set up against you to have a relationship every hurdle and it's just getting harder and harder and um, not even viable to be in a relationship so what this guy is actually saying here is throughout this video is get used to it and be happy with what you've got because chances are it's over for you you old you're too old to be in a relationship uh it is not available to you uh politically intellectually uh you have been shaped 
and nurtured in by 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 pop culture and society and politicians in a way that makes it virtually impossible for you to have a relationship in effect they have turned society into they've turned everyone into virtual homosexuals when you think about it you are living a homosexual lifestyle now I brought this up in a previous lecture I don't think people understood what I was talking about not understanding what I mean by that and and when you think about it these masses of young people who are singles and you see them everywhere you see them on YouTube you see all these YouTube stars they're all single they're all in their 20s 30s uh, doesn't matter who they are what they're talking about um, they're all singles it's singles arguing and and interacting with other singles they are living the homosexual lifestyle. They have turned everyone into homosexuals. And what I mean by that is that at best you can only hope for transient relationships and you do not reproduce. Those are the characteristics of every homosexual relationship. Transience and sterility. And that's what they have achieved. Transience and sterility. A temporary and sterile relationship is all that you're going to get because of the way they structured culture and made it virtually impossible for you to do. It. And it is not your fault. That's what I'm trying to say. And it, this didn't happen by accident. This is not the normal progression of the world. This was designed systematically to be exactly the way it is and to bring forth the objective that they are looking for. And they mainly targeted women for this. Half of the population is targeted. And women are actually the ones who lose the most. They abdicated, relinquished their very biological imperatives, their biological drives, their instincts. They gave it up. They gave it up for Marxism and for privilege. And that's exactly what this guy is advocating here. That's how powerful cultural Marxism was and is. Another factor against you is that... Um, as a female, you are forced to act in a masculine way. And as a male, you're forced to act in a feminine way, resulting in neither one being attractive and desirable to the other. Pretty smart, eh? Pretty smart how these people can alter nothing less than human sexuality. Your biology, your instincts, your inst instinctual drives, they can upset Logos, upset the order of nature, upset reason, and therefore upend the world and society. Uh, they have in fact robbed you of your femininity and your masculinity they robbed you of your gender you no longer in, in, in what they're telling you is you no longer have a gender you no longer can be proud of who you are and exercise and cherish your masculinity or your femininity in fact they have robbed you of your gender identity which is your identity as a human being now that's major that's a major accomplishment people can the devil be admired in a certain way yes 
we can all be in awe of evil. The two opposite poles can no longer come together because there's no distinction between them. They did a tremendous job on you. And they're doing it every day. They're attacking you every day. It keeps going on and on and on and on. And it affects you, the millennial. It affects you, the individual in your teens, 20s, 30s. By the time you're 40, it's all over. It's done with. They created exactly who they wanted to create. And that's what you've become. You, you have to have... Uh, two very strong individuals who who resist, who ignore all the programming and who are very aware, two individuals who are extremely aware of the forces against them. Those are the individuals and, and also individuals who are in touch with their own needs and know exactly how another individual and what type of an individual will be able to fulfill those needs and also two individuals who get satisfaction in fulfilling the needs of the other those are the the the, the strong individuals who will be able to form relationships these are the individuals whom i would call really the independent ones independence of mind of opinion because every person who enters a situation where they encounter the opposite gender is already working from a brainwashed point of view from an indoctrinated point of view their opinions have been altered their opinions have been formed by the children of Satan. It doesn't matter what situation you enter, that is the way you're going to approach it with that perspective that's been ingrained in you. And it's going to hinder your connection to the other individual. The cultural Marxists have already set up the way you're going to respond to this other individual. The Marxists have already set up your fears, your prejudices, your insecurities, and your aversion towards the opposite gender. So you are already at the very beginning, at the very start, you are already handicapped and made handicapped and programmed especially women are programmed to respond a specific way and it is not conducive to forming relationships you see you were already set up to have an aversion towards forming a relationship. Therefore, you will not reproduce. Individuals that are aware of this and resist this and fight this are the individuals that will counteract these forces and make the connection between each other. And I also want you to set up a good life for yourself with nice external circumstances. So that means, for example, make sure that you have a rich life, have a good career, have something that you're passionate about in your life, have a life purpose, have some nice friends that you like to hang out with, have some hobbies that you enjoy, have your money situation handled, make sure you're unhooked from addictions like drugs, smoking, alcohol, overeating, make sure you're happy with your family life. Make sure you have your health and your hygiene in order. When you've got all this stuff, you're going to be happy. 
Okay, again, what he's doing here is he's setting up a uh, coping mechanism for singlehood. He is talking about himself and what his own strategy is, uh, being a single individual. Uh, there's, this is not wrong with what he's doing. What is really erroneous and um, uh, damaging even is that he is implying that if you develop yourself not to have any needs, that is the point when you should get into a relationship. That's where his problem is. Um, first of all, he's denying needs. And um, secondly, he is uh, claiming that a person with needs is in fact unfit to be in a relationship. Uh, shouldn't get into a relationship because it will be an unhealthy relationship. It's the total opposite. Um, those people who he imagines and he imagines himself to be the way he describes uh, a completely uh, content individual which doesn't exist also, contentment never uh, leaves any impetus for action or motivation. It doesn't set up any need for a relationship if you're content. Motivation for anything comes from discontentment, not contentment. You want to gain something, you want to reach something. And um, the way he imagines himself or is working towards it to be a totally content individual is a coping mechanism for his situation of being single and he's passing this coping mechanism on to thousands of other singles possibly which can be comforting but it's also phony and damaging the person is not given the opportunity to disclose their situation based on reality. And misleading in him trying to fantasize about reaching a level of contentment through being single. And if that ever does happen, that individual will never reach out to be in a relationship. Only an individual who is lacking something is going to get into a relationship. Especially with the risks and the sacrifices and the losses associated with relationships now. And always. Always. Being in a relationship is an investment. And in many ways, it's a loss. It's, it's both a gain and a loss. And why would anybody want to get into that situation if they already have everything? If they have no need to get into that situation? The one thing a single individual has is uh, independence. And uh, why would this completely content, confident happy, independent individual want to get into a relationship and lose their independence. Because being in a relationship is the loss of independence to varying degrees depending on the type of relationship you're in and who your partner is. So logically, his message is nonsensical. Um, we all know that uh, being single and not having an intimate relationship with an individual does not and will never lead to contentment unless you uh, are physiologically a mutation in some way, physiologically, psychologically, uh, emotionally, a mutation 
uh, then maybe you can approach that state to some level. But if we're talking about healthy individual, um, what he, the type of individual he's implying here does not exist. But what he's actually doing in this video is helping people develop coping mechanisms as much as possible. But uh, through denial and pretense. That's the key. That's what he's pushing here. Denial and pretense. But at the same time, he's claiming that once you develop yourself to be completely self-content, that's when you should get into your rela relationship. That's the only time you should get into a relationship and a form relationship. It doesn't work. It will not work at that point. And that's what his huge deception is through his message. And also, you're going to work on your psychology beyond that, right? So you've got your psychology down. You've got all these external factors in your life down. Now you've created an awesome life for yourself. Now you've created an awesome life for yourself. Being single and masquerading as a happy, content individual. Having everything that you ever need. This is what, see, you got to understand, this is what single, childless women, middle age, approaching 40, want to hear. And he wants to convince himself as well. What he's actually doing, you have to understand this, he wants to convince himself and he wants to convince you that you don't need anyone. If you reach that point, you will be the ideal individual. See? The progressive ideal individual. The modern human being. One that doesn't need anyone to make you happy. Where the fuck does that leave society? And what emotional drives are you going to have to want to get into your relationship? Well, why would you want to anyway at that point? And you're going to get into a relationship? I don't think so. <laughs> oh, man. Am I missing something here? So you've got your psychology down, you've got all these external factors down, you're completely content, you're happy, you're independent, and you're going to get into a relationship and lose all of that. <laughs> oh man. No. Then you'll be able to cope with singlehood to some extent. A relationship is hard work. And let's not forget, singles who are younger than this guy are also going to have babies, which puts a whole new magnitude of demands on the individual. When you're in a relationship, you can no longer live for yourself and be this fantastic individual that he describes. In a relationship, you're living for somebody else. And if you don't want that, don't get into a relationship. A relationship is a partnership. Now you can be authentic. Now, as long as you're just interacting with people and you're out and about and you have chances to bump into other people, then they're going to see you being happy and being confident and being completely authentic and not needing anything. And they're going to be like, oh, that's kind of cool. I rarely meet a person like that. And they're going to get attracted to you. And now you're going to be authentic, bullshitting to yourself and putting up a facade for others publicly. That's authentic. That's an insincere individual. That's a phony. And those individuals are not attractive at all to anyone, especially not to women, because women want to receive. What will you give to a woman? That's the question. If you don't give anything to a woman, 
you won't have a woman very long. That's the rule. It's rule number one. Many of us who have lost women, even women that we loved, it was because we weren't giving. At least not in her eyes. Think about it. Think about your situation in the past. If a woman doesn't get, a woman walks. If I ever meet somebody like that, I'm gonna say bullshit. The guy's got a problem. The woman's got a problem. That's a bunch of crap. That's fake. He or she's pretending to be something that they're not. That's a sociopath right there. Bingo. The guy got it right. That's the sociopath. He named it. And he wants to be a sociopath. Well, I don't think he's a sociopath and he won't be able to keep it on. You just look like a twit. Look like a goof. To be a sociopath, you actually need a lot of skill and have no conscience. A lot of skill though. Not too many people are sociopaths. But some lucky women do run into them. And that's what this guy's describing. <laughs> oh my God. It's the worst thing that a woman wants to encounter. Because she will be drained dry, financially and emotionally. A sociopath is a scammer. All women are sociopaths. All women are scammers. However, the male sociopath is much more rare. And what this guy describes without even knowing it, he's describing, if it's going to be a male that he's describing, he's describing the male sociopath. My God, this guy's telling people to be sociopaths. Hmm. I don't think he even realizes it. And a healthy single individual, the male individual, will not be a sociopath. He'll be a normal person, full of needs, wanting to get into a relationship, needing to get into a relationship, needing to bring someone into their life, needing to give themselves to someone else, part of themselves. That's not what a sociopath wants to do, complete opposite. With a sociopath, it's all about deception. And this guy is being highly deceptive, but to himself. It's a coping mechanism, assuagement. And he calls it authentic. Can you believe it? Let's not be too hard on him. But women actually believe this? Let me give you a little advice, women. If you ever run into the type of individual that this guy describes, run, run, or you will be the victim. The female predator will be the victim. It actually brings a smile to some people, that idea. Attractive? As I said before, from a woman's angle, such a guy will be extremely unattractive. 
Let me tell you something, guy. If you're going to reach your destination and become the individual which you describe, you will be unattractive, highly unattractive to women. Because he will be useless to her. This is the proverbial uh, douchebag in terms of how a woman looks at it. This is the so-called narcissist, the way the woman looks at it. Because the woman's always going to say, what can he give me? Is he giving? What can I get from him? He's got everything. He doesn't need anything. And he doesn't need me. And he's giving me nothing. Whoa, isn't that great? I can just mingle with him. <laughs> this bald guy could lie to himself all he wants. It makes him feel better about his situation. But this scenario is highly inaccurate. Has anybody ever met an individual like that? As soon as they see that, I know the individual has a lot of problems and is foremost in authentic, insincere, a fraud, the total opposite of what this guy is claiming. He's being inauthentic right here. But we have to have pity on him. He just wants to deal with his unfortunate situation. He really wants to be in a relationship. That is something that's very romantic to him. Now, it's probably not romantic for a guy who's been married for a lot of years. <laughs> but, yeah. For a lot of singles, it's a very romantic idea, especially if you're approaching 40 and you've never had any children. You've never been in a family situation. You've always led the so-called homosexual lifestyle. Into which the cultural Marxist forced you into. Well, I got news for you. No male and definitely no woman will ever be attracted to such an individual. In fact, they're going to be repulsed. The opposite of attraction. A man who has everything, needs nothing to make him happy, will therefore give nothing to a woman. A man who needs nothing, demands nothing, from a woman who also needs nothing and demands nothing. That scenario just is non-existent, my friend. Non-existent. It's in your fantasy. It's in your mind. It's something that makes you feel better about yourself and your situation, but it doesn't exist. A man who has everything, needs nothing, will therefore be interpreted by every woman as a man who will give nothing. And that is what women call the dreaded, despised, hated, repulsive, Narcissist. That's what women call a narcissist. And that's what this poor fool is aspiring to. He's going to have less success with women than he has now. Zero success. And even worse, he'll be putting up a facade anyway. 
He'll be dishonest. It won't even be real. He will be inauthentic. Not expressing his true self. Okay, so the complete opposite uh, is going to happen in the mechanism of a relationship. The way that two people interact uh, at the possible commencement of a relationship. Uh, from the woman's perspective, if such an individual who is absolutely confident and stable and happy by themselves and uh, doesn't need anything or anyone, the female will immediately uh, be creeped out by that individual. Definitely the opposite, the very opposite of being attracted to such an individual. In fact, doesn't an individual like that? who is completely adjusted to such a degree and needs no one even though such an individual does not exist unless they are an aberration pathological uh, but doesn't it if if an individual like that did exist or even came close to his description wouldn't it intimidate women immediately wouldn't it intimidate anyone males or females immediately and you would say there's something sick about this individual because uh oh my god it's 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 totally laughable what this guy is saying absolutely laughable oh my god this guy is so ignorant about female nature and about relationships and this is the field that he's in. This is unbelievable. I mean, you know, it just shows you that uh, you, you need you need a born talent to do any profession. You have to be born to do it, and you have to be born with uh, with perception and uh, discernment in that field. A penetrating insight above average to be able to do it and this guy doesn't have it because he's he's actually imagining the total opposite of what reality is now a female uh, when confronted with such an individual that this guy is painting here presenting here uh, a totally independent totally more of an aloof confident um, not needing anything or anyone type of individual would creep out a female immediately and a female would never have any use for such an individual because a person who has got everything they need uh, they will not need anything from the from the woman and, and that is precisely what this guy is advocating for one not to need anything for anyone else and that is precisely the point at which he is suggesting that individuals get into a relationship seek a relationship when you need nothing from another individual think about how absurd that is and if a male doesn't need anything from a woman a woman will never have any control over that male Right. The reason women have control over males, and that is the mechanism of a, of a, of a natural mechanism of the way uh, any relationship functions, is that the male has a real need for the female. Not to forget that he completely ignores male nature, male biology, where the sexuality of the male is completely tied with his desire for a female with his bonding with a female and uh, the passions of the male will always be his needs biologically speaking as well which the female does not have towards the male so the a male by definition will always be the slave because he's the slave of his passions his sexuality his male nature he completely ignores that. That doesn't exist in his world. It doesn't exist 
in terms of his model of male nature. This guy completely ignores the very mechanism of a relationship and how it functions. The mechanism is very predictable in any relationship, in any uh, male-female association, encounter. The mechanism starts functioning right away and he completely discounts, dismisses this mechanism. The female has very particular needs for the male and the male has very particular needs for the female. Now speaking of the male, it is ridiculous to even claim that he's going to reach the point at which he will make himself happy completely and will not need anything from a female. Um, if he's a straight male, that is even biologically impossible because the very strong passion of the male comes from his sexuality. And through his sexuality, the male authentically expresses himself and which is the source of his bonding to the female through sex through sexuality the female gains male validation from the fact that the male needs the woman cherishes the woman to make the male happy. Where the male gains female validation from the woman allowing the male to penetrate inside of her, of her body. That gift which the female allows the male is a very powerful source and definition an affirmation of female validation for the male. And that's where you have the bonding. So it's even ridiculous to suggest that there can ever be a male who can make himself totally happy and doesn't need the female to make him happy at all. Possibly a homosexual male with a female. I don't understand it. Any other scenario how it could even be possible. It's against nature. And it's the mechanism of the relationship which this guy completely denies and dismisses. Just to add to this very important point, uh, the male intrinsically is not so much a slave to the female, but the male is a slave to his own passions, a slave to his own biology. Uh, the male is a slave to his own emotional capacity. The male emotional sensitivity, which is far greater than that of the female, none of which is present in the female. The motivations of the male is always outward. His actions are outward towards the female, where the actions of the female is always inward, solipsistic, self-centered actions. Every action is self-centered for the female. And that is why the uh, female is immune to emotion towards the male. The only component that emotion has for the female is how it relates to herself. Whereas it's the opposite for the male. And that's a sad part for the male. The male will always be the victim in a relationship. Because the male is not immune 
to emotional trauma? The number one factor in a relationship with a woman is that the woman will always be looking to what she can gain or receive from the male. Be it emotional or be it utilitarian, uh, both. Uh, the utilitarian supersedes the emotional when it comes right down to it. Um, that's why in a lot of the cases um, a woman does not need to have any emotional attachment to the male or needs not to be affected emotionally or have an emotional bond to the male as long as the utility part is there. We see that in many, many, many cases. And if the utility portion of what the woman gains or gets out of the relationship is not present, the woman will walk. A woman does not gain attachment from a male through sexual contact or even sexual fulfillment. Whereas the male establishes a permanent bond with the female through sexuality. Now this is absent in the female. This is why we talk about the female as the quintessential whore. Because sexual does not translate into the emotional for the female, no matter how much they claim that it does. And if it does, it is extremely temporary. It only lasts until the next time you do not do the dishes when she expected you to. This is precisely why to a woman a sexual contact remains purely on a physical level. Again, consistent with the whore. Exactly what they accuse the male of, which is a complete lie. Because any f sexual contact with a female, even if the male is not completely attracted to that female, if a male is going to be sincere, they will admit that they establish an emotional bond with that female through sexuality, which may appear on the surface. It only appears as it being purely physical to the female who is incapable of feeling the emotion that sexuality generates. That's the key. The male feels it, but the woman does not. And that's sad. And that's when the male becomes a slave to his emotions. Where the female walks away unscathed. So therefore, if any relationship is devoid of utility in the eyes of the female, as this guy is implying, since the male has already uh, become very uh, self-serving in every way and has no needs for the female, therefore he is going to give nothing to the female. Again, this comes from this... Uh, horrendous and false PUA pickup artist training with the goal of creating this false image of the aloof male, the emotionally detached male who is not impacted emotionally through sexual contact with a female, which is totally against nature, totally against the mechanism of any male-female relationship. In fact, such a creature is more akin to being female than male. Not male, but female. 
It's the female who is aloof. It's the female who is emotionally detached. It's the female who is not impacted by emotion, by sexuality, by sexual contact. So what this guy is actually advancing here, promoting here, is for the male to take on female characteristics. I kind of wonder where that comes from for this guy. Uh, if a female detects that the male needs nothing from her and conversely he will give nothing to her because he expects her not to demand anything from him and not need anything from him in terms of any female there's no relationship there it cannot happen that woman is going to run because the entire relationship consistent with this guy's very effective PUA training the relationship will remain purely on a physical level because he totally removes emotion from the paradigm that he sets up between two people that don't need each other they're already very happy by themselves therefore neither one is going to demand and neither one is going to give anything to the other it's an impossible situation that this guy fantasizes he is either a PUA trainer or he is a PUA student that is detestable to a woman to any woman in facing the prospect that she will never get anything or never get anything out of this independent self-actualized self-contained very happy confident man this is in fact what women commonly refer to as narcissists if it's just physical or sexual the woman's gone like that she's gonna walk she's gonna run okay but a male has to have considerable emotional need for that female and that's what the female wants because that is when uh, she can trap him and have control over him because he needs her and he is dependent on her which means that he desires her and women need to feel desired in every every relationship and if the male feels desired which males also need to be desired and when they're desired that's when they receive female validation of course sexuality of the male is tied to uh, uh, definitely not a purely physical experience because that would be like uh, working out at the gym you know there would be no emotional component but but what women don't understand is because women lack emotion or the capacity for emotion or at least deep emotion this is why though we can call women the quintessential whores because of their emotional bankruptcy the lack of emotional attachment the lack of emotional investment of the woman towards the man in the absence of utility women absolutely lack that because they don't need it but a male uh, lives by that kind of, of 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 a need of emotional need and sexuality through sexuality he is rewarded with that emotional fulfillment which is female validation I, I keep saying this over and over again in, in, in many different ways trying to get through uh, basically to women I mean men men know this already uh, definitely they know it uh, they feel it inside but women think that men are after sex which is which is uh, ridiculous for any woman to it, it just shows you the lack of emotional capacity from women that they would actually believe this because they women think that men are just like women all right 
Uh, women uh, get their perspective from female nature only, except for very knowledgeable women, of which there is only a few. But women get their perspective from their own female nature, and they figure that men are just like them in terms of emotional capacity, and that is not the situation. And men get tremendous emotional satisfaction, emotional, not physical satisfaction, from sex, from getting a blowjob, from eating pussy. You got to understand that that is not a physical act for a man. And if it only remains a physical act, like with prostitutes or one night stands, the male is left very empty. The male is left with a state of depression. Worse than he was before he actually went into the act. Before he received this act of pure physical sexuality. Only in terms of physical experience. Any man going into a relationship must have a very strong emotional need for the woman. And the woman demands it. Every woman demands that. Because the woman wants to feel desired. Even if she doesn't desire the male. Or to a much, much, much lesser emotional extent than the male desires her. She has to feel that this male desires her and the more the better. So it's completely the opposite of what this guy is saying. Such an individual that he's presenting here, which doesn't exist by the way, definitely not a male individual. Female, yes. We call those frigid females. Even those females are incapacitated. They're not healthy females. But they do exist. They do exist in uh, considerable numbers. And we've all run into those females. And they're damaged. They're damaged in that sort of way that they're unable to, uh, to feel emotion. Even more than the so-called healthy female who is incapacitated in that in that sense but uh in terms of males don't exist you can wish yourself to be that so you can lesser your pain of loneliness of singlehood of having all these voids which are unfulfilled you can pretend as you're doing in this video but a male like that doesn't exist this is why what this guy is talking about here is absolutely inauthentic it's not that it's authentic it's inauthentic in fact he is promoting insincerity for a male or a female to be inauthentic and that will last, what, seconds in terms of a relationship? <laughs> it's, it's the epitome of being inauthentic, not authentic. Let me tell you something. You can detect right here that this guy has fallen for PUA training, pickup artist training, where they imagine that the so-called revered and elusive alpha male is exactly what he is presenting and that is completely false this is not the alpha male the alpha male does everything the first rule of the alpha male is he does everything with tremendous passion and therefore desire an alpha male is always authentic he cannot function any other way than complete authenticity and this is why he scares women the alpha male actually scares off women because of his total openness directness his total authentic nature brutally authentic 
That's exactly what an alpha male is. The type A alpha male is very hypersensitive to emotion. And that in itself will scare any woman because it's the complete diametrical opposite of female nature, which is emotionally bankrupt. No need for it. But these fucking PUAs, these liars, these morons, they're presenting the alpha male as someone that he is not. They're presenting some type of a male which does not exist. So our friend here had considerable PUA training and he's really attracted to it. Mm -hmm. Or he could be a PUA trainer himself. He, he qualifies. I would say go ahead. <sighs> but it's a scam. You know why? Because it's a lie. That's why. Now, consider the type of male that this guy here is presenting. And if it did exist, that male would have no desire for the female. And the female then would have absolutely no use or see no value in such a male. See, even though this guy talks to many women, this, that's his audience other than PUA wannabes. He is very ignorant of female nature. Because any woman would have no need, nothing to do with, nothing to do with any man who will offer her nothing. You, you simply cannot, I mean, the mechanism doesn't work like this. This is, uh, you know, the laws of nature don't function like this. If you've got an aloof male who has no needs, is perfectly happy, is perfectly fulfilled, how in the hell are you going to preserve his desire for the female or even to be in a relationship? It, uh, how much of a moron is this guy? Seriously. This is just simple logic. This is a mechanism of nature. If you lose one, you cannot retain the other. If you retain something, you will lose something else. You cannot be an aloof male and still have a desire for the female. So from both sides, there can never be a relationship under these conditions where neither side really needs each other. They're just going to mingle. <laughs> They're just going to mingle. Well, no woman wants to mingle. Every woman wants commitment, exclusive commitment, a solid bond, where the male is emotionally dependent on the woman, which means emotionally needs the woman. You know, the more I do this video, the, the more sorry I feel for this guy. It's just amazing how indoctrinated he has become with this degenerate, and I mean degenerate, sick, disgusting cultural Marxism that he was imbued with probably from a very early age. He actually wants a woman like that? That he's presenting? What kind of male would want a woman like that? Okay, so look. let's look at this from the male perspective. This is not a feminine female. There's no femininity here. They have removed femininity. They have taken masculinity from us. And this guy is going to go along with it and accept it. He shows no masculinity. And he's talking about women. 
that do not exhibit femininity. It's a very sad case. I'm disgusted by it. I'm physically disgusted by what I'm hearing from this guy. Absolutely. And I was instructed to view this and learn from this by the uh, a female who uh, made a comment on my channel. <laughs> well, let me tell you something. I know that you are a single, childless female approaching 40 years of age. And you don't want to hear what I have to say. I understand that. But you cannot escape what I have to say. And at the same time, the type of individual that this guy whom you are following and taking direction from and being inspired by, the person that this guy is presenting, the male, you as a woman would have nothing to do with. I know it. So when I watched this video, it made me sick to my stomach. It made me sick to my stomach and it made me realize how the cultural Marxists who want to destroy the very essence of relationships and who largely have already destroyed it, which is men and women equally needing each other it makes me sick to realize what they have accomplished and then to see that this fool here is promoting it he's promoting it because the way the cultural marxists always work that's what communism is is they promise you freedom they promise you liberation, sexual liberation, economic liberation. Everything is artificial. And in the end, what they actually give you is enslavement. And that's what this stupid fool is promoting. And you know what? I don't think he even realizes it. He just wants to be liberated from his needs. From his loneliness. From his very desire for a relationship. He wants to be relieved of that pain. And that's what the cultural Marxists the Talmudics that's what they promise and he has taken it and passing it on to his audience and women's in charge and they don't want to just mingle mm -mm. sorry don't discount how powerful this is. It seems a little bit abstract, maybe airy-fairy, hard to believe, but I'm telling you that this is really the secret of building lasting, non-gimmicky attraction. The and reality I is, if there is no need, there is no attraction. And you really analyze what attraction is. It's a person's need for something that you see in the other individual. It's something that you want to receive from the other individual. That's what attraction is. If uh, you have no needs, you will also have no attraction. Non-gimmicky attraction is something that you recognize. A characteristic in another individual, or many characteristics in another individual, that you really want to get a hold of something that'll 
build yourself and will complement you and will fill your voids. That's why you're with the individual, because you need something from them. Uh, this guy also has no understanding of female nature and how women function. And um, the way they function is every woman puts a value on any male which they come in contact with. And the value is based on the woman's needs, whatever that may be. Maybe security, it may be their lack of competence, their lack of self esteem, uh, maybe their their appearance is not up to their own satisfaction, and they're looking for a male who will compliment them. And that goes vice versa between both genders. Attraction is based on need, that's what I'm trying to say based on need and this guy is trying to discount and dismiss one's needs basic female nature again i repeat is predicated upon what she can gain based on her needs however irrational or selfish they may be and the last point that I'm gonna make as I'm wrapping up here is really take care of your body and take care of your hygiene, take care of your health, make sure you're eating well, make sure that you're taking care of basic hygiene stuff, brushing your teeth, showering every day, doing your, you know, your yoga, your meditation, your gym routine, following up on that, eating healthy, cleaning up your diet. These are some very practical things and they might seem shallow but really the reason you're doing them is you're doing them for you again to create a happy life for yourself but they're also going to make you attractive because if you're taking care of yourself to the best of your ability and you've got your psychology down and your life is awesome i mean who would not want to be a part of that of course they would everyone wants to be a part of that what people are repelled by is neediness you coming into a relationship and just wanting more for me, 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 me. It's like, I need this, I need that, I need you for me to feel happy. It sounds like he's describing a normal, healthy, well-adjusted woman. <laughs> Nobody wants to really be in a relationship like that. Not a healthy person, a dysfunctional person might. And then that will create something that you are not gonna want anyways. All right, so that's it. This is the deep underlying truth of how to be attractive. Don't listen to the gimmicks. Solve this problem. Nip it in the butt by addressing your need for other people. You really don't need other people. Find out why you're not happy as you are right now. You heard him. You really don't need other people. Well, I think you, buddy, you need somebody badly. And you know it whom you are able to impact, to affect, to change, to modify, to transform, to develop. That's where your value in the masculine will come through. And conversely, that holds true if you're a female and the impact that you will have on the male. You cannot do that by yourself. You simply cannot. And if you can, if you could, there would be absolutely no need for any relationships. So what this guy's actually telling you is giving you a an excuse to deny your need for another individual.